It's a 1v2 situation, all of your teammates are dead, you're breathing heavily, it's the whole world against you and you don't know what to do. A few moments later, you died. Has this ever happened to you? You sit down and wonder how pro players clutch in tournaments in a competitive setting, and here you are struggling to clutch and win rounds in SND ranked. Today I'll discuss one of the worst things that can happen to you in a ranked game. Last man standing, finish it. Being left alone. Throughout this guide, I'll help you learn everything that you need to know on how to clutch around in Search and Destroy. Most players struggle to make the right decisions, with the time ticking and the numbers not on their side. They'll either hide in a corner until the round ends, or run around the map with no idea on what to do. It's obvious that you need a strategy in mind to play this game mode, and no, you don't exactly need to plan out everything that you're going to do, because things will not always go the way you want them to. So instead, go think about what you can do, may it be a 1v1, 1v3, or a 1v5 situation, there's always a way to turn the tables and not play your enemy. So whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro, I hope you'll find this guide useful. A 1v1 post-plan scenario has got to be one of the most heart-stopping yet one of the most common situations you can be in. The stakes are high and the outcome of the round can depend on a single decision or a mistake. As the attacker slash planter, your goal in a 1v1 is to take down the defender while they're trying to defuse or buy enough time so that your enemy won't be able to defuse the bomb. Just keep in mind that it's very important to consider the time left in the round. If the bomb has a lot of time left, you might want to jiggle peek to get the defuser off the bomb instead of taking the gunfight. If you do this, the defuser will Will most likely move away from the bomb since they know that they have a lot of time to work with. However, if you know the bomb is running out of time, then you can try to peek and shoot because chances are the defender will stick the defuse or run away. There are times that the defender will chase you down and go for the kill, so you can use this to your advantage and re-peek. I know some of you are already saying it would have been a lot easier if you just went straight for the kill. Our goal here is to secure the round in the safest way possible for a higher chance of clutching the round without risking you and your team's rank points. Now, what if you were the defender. The defender slash the defuser usually has the disadvantage during post-plant scenarios, but that's only if the attacker plays it right, which isn't the case in most of our ranked games. As a defender, you need to know where the bomb is planted for. Sometimes this will give away the location where the attacker could be playing, but most of the time, there will be too many angles to watch out for. One thing you can do is tap the bomb as early as possible so you can bait and figure out the position of the planter. After you tap the bomb, don't make any noise and preem an area where you think the planter might show up. Most players will just walk and check every corner to find the attacker, which of course works sometimes, but tapping the bomb creates pressure which forces the attacker to peek and check site. This saves you from wasting time clearing the whole bomb site and locate the enemy without even trying. Remember that there are no guarantees because you will always face different types of enemies in your ranked games, and only God knows what's running through their head. Gathering information is one of the most important yet overlooked things by players in the game. It's not the usual audio or visual cues in the game like footsteps, mini map markers that I mentioned in my past guides. There's a lot of information that you can gain from paying attention to the small details of your teammates who just died. Teammate death markers, kill feed, and the weapons that your enemies are using are some of the things that you should watch out for. Your teammate got killed by a Fennec, then you might want to keep distance as a long range fight might benefit you. U736, don't give them space and go for close quarters. Where did your teammate get shot from? Where did you hear the gunshot? Think about what you can do next and have a reason why you should do it. You must be wondering why clutching a 1v1 on both sides sounds suspiciously way too easy. Well, you're right because we're actually just getting started. I personally don't feel nervous whenever I'm the last guy left in our team, and it's because I'm so used to respawn game modes which are three times more chaotic than SND. But what about you? Do you still freak out when you're left to clutch? Let me know in the comments below. Most clutches are won because of the other team throwing. There will be unnecessary peaks and careless pushes to get the final kill that can give you free kills or a free clutch even. But what if you're playing against the ultimate sweats? This is where things get interesting. If you're stuck in a 1v5 situation, one thing you can do to make your life easier is to isolate 1v1s. By turning your 1v5 into 5 separate 1v1s, this will improve your chances of winning the round. Play around cover and don't take on multiple enemies at once. This is not a clutch as I still have all of my teammates, but take this terminal ace for example. Did you see what I did there? Let me explain. 
The round has just started and I pushed up long A and saw a sniper trying to peek. I missed my first shot so I repositioned to get better cover. And as soon as I aimed down my sights, you'll notice that I used the pillar as a cover for my left side and secured my first kill. After taking down the first guy, I quickly slid forward, got my second kill midair, and used this pillar as my cover from the third guy on the right. I tried to peek again and got the third kill and pushed further as I wanted that ace. I preempted office and duty free and got my fourth kill, went to cover and popped my UAV. Took a quick look at spawn just in case someone's camping, saw the last guy on my minimap and went for the last kill. Big shout out to my teammates for not taking away my ace. Just remember that turning 1v5 into separate 1v1s by playing around cover and isolating angles is a very important thing you need to add to your gameplay. Clutching around or not, it is still a very useful skill to have as a player. One big factor that hurts your ability to clutch is being too self-conscious and anxious about the situation you're in. Feeling pressure is natural, but to actively notice and do something about the pressure is under your control. Have you found yourself shaking or tensed up when clutching? Well, you're not alone, and I'm pretty sure that there are other players out there who feel the same way. So what can you do? Breathe. Don't forget to breathe. Breathing is the first step to clutching. I know a lot of friends who don't speak or breathe whenever they're in a clutch situation, which is something you definitely shouldn't do. Not breathing properly only adds fuel to the fire, making you nervous and stiff at the same time, which can hold you back from performing well. Breathe. Loosen up your shoulders and shake your hands if you have to, so you can enter and play in a calm state and be more decisive. You don't have the time to worry about who's spectating you or what are people gonna think if you don't clutch up. Keep your head clear from irrelevant thoughts and focus on your precision, where you can get a free line of sight on your enemy, how much time is left, and what your next move should be. Remember that keeping calm and believing in yourself doesn't change the fact that you're outnumbered and the odds are stacked against you. Keeping your composure, gathering information, and isolating 1v1s are the three important steps to help you increase your chances of clutching your games. But do you know what's more important? Using a top 10 weapon. Watch it right here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.